Hey guys, it's Adam with ND72. So today we're back with my SL55R230 chassis. So what we're gonna be doing today is something that I just really wanted to do before I drive around, around the car a real lot. And I feel it's a problem a lot of you guys have. Get rid of this pesky ABC suspension. So, a lot of these cars, ABC suspensions are hydraulic suspension. It's really cool when it works. It'll sit there as weight sensor, so if you put a big load in there, it'll move it up. If you want to lower or rise the car, it does it really quick. It does that whole like hopping thing. There's a lot of cool features to it, but when it starts going bad, it gets bad and expensive. Because if you basically blow out an accumulator, a line, and then you have to do like the shock, it just starts racking up so much. So I want to delete that whole system and go to something a little bit more funner. Okay, so what we got on this table is my solution to get rid of that pex pexy ABC suspension. So what we got is a coil over conversion kit from Silver Suspensions. So this, I'm pretty sure the website, I'll put a link down below and all that stuff of which one I actually bought, is silver-na-com. You can buy the kit from them. It costs roughly $1,300, which is kind of average. I was debating either that one or the BC. There's a few others. BC is a little bit cheaper, but I have the BC coilover kit on my E55, and there are quite a bit of things I did not like about it, that as I was looking over the kit, this kit resolves some of those other issues. And with this kit, they say you do not need to buy sway bars. So what some people do is they go find an SL320 from Europe and buy their sway bars and they bolt right in, or they go to a couple other companies that make them. I want to say Viking is one company, but the sway bars cost about two effing grand. More than this kit costs. So it's not like I'm like trying to be cheap or nothing, but this kit guarantees you will not need a sway bar. And also, I'm just going to say this, this is not a recommendation that you should do this on any other vehicle, that you drive on the actual road, so on and so forth. I don't run sway bars, I take them out of my SLK. I took them out of a lot of my cars basically because when I launch they help out and they drop LBs and I don't feel any difference in the handling. But like I said, this kit says you don't even need it. So, the kit is pretty good quality. It looks very easy to adjust. Basically, when you put it in there, you knock the ring off and you can adjust it. It comes with new hardware up top. And if you want to do the damper, I think it's 24-way dampening. You got a nice little dial right there that you can feel a good click. Like, oh yeah, that sounds good. And then you also, for the bottom mounts, I think it's the front. You get new hardware for that too. It's basically the same kind of idea how to adjust it. Not super crazy like that, but holy crap, the quality is very good. And then also... You get with this, if you actually see in there, we're not gonna open it because I don't wanna lose it yet, wrenches. So you get the wrenches to crank it loose and take it off. And what it actually looks like is if you look right over here, I'm gonna have to verify, but those look like the sizes so you can break all this stuff loose. I will be looking to it. Also comes with an Allen, the perfect Allen to adjust everything you need to adjust on this kit. So, so far, super happy with it. I'm gonna put a link below for you guys to find out. Also, this kit comes with a few options. I didn't really option this set about. It comes with little things like certain covers. It comes with like, it says like a low, low kit, or I guess you can make it even lower. And then they also, if you want a custom spring rate, they'll do that too. The spring rate I got, I'm gonna have to actually go look it up because I told them what I was gonna do with the car and they gave me the spring rate that they said would be the best for that. And the benefit, this is all out of the United States. Nothing wrong with anything else, getting it from anywhere else, but it ships out of Fort Myers, Florida. And literally, I live in Florida, this kit, I ordered it and paid for it maybe around 2 p.m. It was here the next day. So super convenient, super great customer service. I called them up. I had a few questions. I asked this. I asked that. And they're very nice people and very good. If you guys do decide to buy the kit, just throw my name down there. Just say, hey, I saw ND72's install video. That might help me out down the road, and I would super appreciate it. But let's pull this car in here and get ready to start doing the install. So this is kind of how, much, how high it sits. Like I fit a whole hand in there just because we are having those little faults in there. Now, the previous owner did get into the rabbit hole, my ABC suspension stuff. So he basically replaced, I should have brand new, basically the shocks, coils, front and rear. I should have a lot of new components, but we, he still was getting the fault. And then overnight, it still drops down. He's got full fluid and all that stuff. So like I said, we're just going to start throwing these coils over there and just be done with it. And all my parts that I don't like destroy will be for sale dirt effing cheap. If you are in Florida, come by and pick them up if you need some ABC parts. But first, we're going to put up on the rack. Go up in the air and start ripping off these wheels. All right, so we, before we start installing anything, I want to kind of weigh everything out and see what it weighs. So I weigh 180, and then once I grab one of the shocks, I'm up to 
192. So that's 12 pounds for this one. Then we're gonna go to this dial. So 12 pounds there. And then this one is 198. That's minus what I am again. 182. So that is basically 24 on one because you have times by two and 30 on the other. So we're at what? 30 plus 24 is 54 pounds. So we're at 54 pounds for this silver suspension component. And then we'll see how much the factory stuff weighs and all the other rigmarole that I'm gonna be ripping off as I do it. So we'll see if this is a good weight savings because even if it just deletes my ABC issue and then I like never have to worry about just driving like in a month or two or in a year and I come out in the car slammed and I can't go home because that's what happened with the CLS. If you guys remember that happens, we had to convert that to coils. And if this drops 50 pounds, heck, I'll be super happy about that. Gets a 50 pound weight loss, which that'll make my car a little bit more zippy and a little bit more faster. So we're gonna start ripping apart the car and then we'll weigh everything at the end. I'll show you how easy it is, to, hopefully how easy it is to install and remove everything and we'll go from there. All right, so first I'm gonna start, this nut right here is the bottom of the shock. I broke a loose already and this is a 22. It's because I wanna start pumping this with penetrating oil and then start beating this piece off. So. This is the bottom of the air shock, and they suck to come out. So before I get too tired with everything else, well, first I'm gonna remove the rim, and also if you could see, there's not straight access to that, so we're gonna take the tie rod out. There should be just that bolt right there, and then this pops out, and then you just gotta start beating this. Every once in a while, you get kind of lucky that they come out easily. Sometimes you just need a few taps. Sometimes it really does suck. All right, now that you got the tie rod out of the way, I just zip tie it up. Because as you can see, now you have a straight shot, just start beating away. So I'm not really going to record it or show too much, but you just keep pounding and pounding. And also leave the nut on there, back it up a little bit, because when it pops, it'll just go forward, and you don't want it to drop all the way down. Okay, I'm winded. I beat the living crap out of it. You can see I literally destroyed the nut. You can see it, it's destroyed. So now I'm going to leave this where it's like wiggly, and then start moving up to remove all that. All right, now you're up top. You got a little connector over here, so just pull that out. That's for the, I'm pretty sure the level, the height sensor, something like that. And then you get these three nuts that are 13s. So I got my handy dandy little impacts. And this is all trashed. Pull out, pull out. Those should come off pretty easily. And now we're gonna start doing lines. All right, so right here is a quick disconnect that Mercedes put in for this line. So this line goes to the shock, but we're gonna be removing all this stuff anyway, so here's a bleeder. So that's what I'm going to do, I've always done it, is crack the bleeder, let all the fluid come out, and then go over here. But how this is supposed to work, if you were just changing this strut normally, this is a quick disconnect, so when you undo it, no pressure will be there, no nothing will like shoot in your face and blind you. Also, right here is an eight mil, Pull that bolt out so you have a little bit more wiggle room with this line because as you can see, it's pretty effing tight. But I'm going to crack that bleeder screw. It should just be um, 11 and let some of that drain out. Yes, I should have a bucket, but I'm being lazy. If I can get it on there. Oh, balls, that's hard. All right, that's going to be two hands, so I'm about to snap something. All right, so we cracked that loose. Some fluid dumped out. Hopefully I'll like verify there's not like a huge amount of pressure in this system when I go to do these lines later. That's all because I'm right here. I just want to be a little bit safe about it. All right. And then I'm going to get an 8 mil. Crack that loose. That way I can wiggle this line. Okay. So to get these quick disconnects, you pull this piece back. See how it pulls back? If you can even... It goes back. And then you just push that line out and it should pop right out. All right. Now you got that all popped out and connected. Now... I should be able to do that bottom bolt down here, pop it all the way out, and then this should just drop. All right, now that we got it out, let's try to weigh it. I don't know if you can see it on camera. 29 pounds. <laughs> Those are trash to me anyways. <laughs> and now let's see what this new one weighs. So reset it. Sixteen, 17 pounds. So that is a 13 pound difference on each of them. So right there, 23 pounds just out of the front, not counting lines or nothing so far. That's a pretty good, pretty good chunk. So we're gonna start installing the new ones. 
and see how that goes. All right, one thing I'm doing just to help out in the future if I ever got to remove them, I'm putting a little anti-seize on there just because this is the part that you got to usually bang out. And if I ever have to remove these for any reason, I don't want to bang it because I'm not trying to replace these again. And like I had to bang and destroy the nut on those. So we're going to take a slide and it's the exact same way, just reverse order. Um, I have one little trick that I'm going to kind of show you. So let me first start putting it in and then I'll show you the trick. All right. So you got the strut placed in there pretty easily. I got the nut kind of on there with some blue Loctite. And then if you see, I got this little jack here. So my idea is I'm going to crank up the jack. It'll start bringing this up. And then I just got to line it up into the three holes. And then I can put the nuts up top. Because like this, it's pretty easy to wiggle around. And you should be able to line it up. Because I feel if I would have done the, front, the top nuts first, <laughs> then I would have been jacking this whole thing up to align that bolt, which might have sucked a little bit. So we're going to try it like this. And I'll tell you how easy it was. All right. So you could also do this with a floor jack. It might be a little bit easier, but I'm just on the lift. So now once you got it all the way pumped up and you got these pushed through, just tighten them with your hand and then with a socket. Don't crank down on them yet. Don't use an impact because once you put full weight on the car, then you crank it down. Just make sure that like it's tight enough where this ring is actually set in here. And then we're just going to go back and reverse and do all this stuff. So we're going to tighten up the nut back here where that little girl is <laughs> right back down there. And we'll put our tie rod back in and then we're going to lower the car. Let it settle a little bit, then start going to the rear. And then at the end, I'm going to start ripping apart all my lines. Okay, so now we got the front basically all done. I got to drop it to the ground and tighten everything up. But I want to kind of just see how low it is. This is not exactly out of the box. I added a little bit of height, just spinning around. But I already think it's going to be a little bit low because look at here. I don't have that much clearance, and it's not even on the ground. So I'm going to set the camera and drop it and see how low it is. Holy poop, that is way too low for me, my personal. This is like, this is literally hitting on the ground. Like, that is way too low for me. So, I am going to have to adjust the front end and suspension by a lot. But I'm going to hold off on that for a little bit. We're going to now knock out the rear stuff. That way I want to kind of adjust them the same amount of time. So, let's start knocking out this rear. Alright, this is the rear. This side's a little bit easier. We're going to start by just taking off the wheel, which is pretty... F and simple. All right, so here's the factory coil. Coil, shock, all that other rigmarole. So, the plan is to remove this bar. So you got an Allen right there. And then that will allow you to get to that inverted Torx right there. And then... There should be a bolt right behind here. So what we got to do first is take down this little cover. And if you look, there is just these little clips that you just pop out and this cover should come right off. All right, so now we got that pesky shield out of the way. You can actually see all the bolts. So this is going to be an Allen. It's going to be a 10. And then you got a nut on the back. So we're just going to go grab our tools and start breaking this stuff down. Once you get that bolt, you'll see that arm shoots right up. And now you have so much like straight shot access more or less, because now you can just move the arm and you can get that triple square out of the way. So I'm going to actually knock out, I'm just going to break both of these loose. So this should be a 21 on both sides. You have a nut on the other, or a bolt on the other side. And then we're going to knock both these out. And then we'll go up to the top. This side's pretty straightforward. All right, so now I got these two, two bolts loose. You're going to see the problem you're going to run into is right here with this one. Most likely it's going to hit the exhaust, because just like the bolt is that big, and it will not come out. Mercedes does this with quite a bit of their cars, and it's effing annoying. So what I'm going to do is undo the exhaust boop, 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 right here, and hopefully that'll give me enough wiggle room. If not, I might have to do like one or two little hangers, but when you do these bolts, be careful. I already th sprayed it with penetrating oil. It's a 13, break it loose, and then you should be able to wiggle the exhaust. All right, now that I got that little, now you can see how much I'm actually going to move it. I also removed the bolt over here, which is the 13. And now I have actual wiggle room, so I should be able to wiggle it through. We're hoping. So I'm going to start working this out. Just be careful with all this stuff. Also, I'm going to get my handy-dandy little, where is it, red jack and put it under here just in case. All right, now that you got all the bolts out and everything, we're going to start lowering my little jack. And then it should make it pretty easy for this arm to pull down. All 
All right, now, oop, I did forget one thing, the leveling sensor. Oh, mine's actually already broken off. I uh, did not know that. I don't know if you can even see that up there. That might have been one of my issues. If you could actually see, let's try to get up there. All right, there, you see it? It's just hanging there. <laughs> but normally, make sure you take it off because that part would have held it. So this should come, yep, see? Bam. Look at all that extra room. And you can wiggle it around and look it. All right, so now we're gonna do the hydraulic line, then go up top. All right, so this hydraulic line is just like the front. It's got a quick release right over there. So the benefit of first doing it like this is you go wiggle it around and get more access to this, because if not, it's like right against the body. And then, oh, wow, this one came off real easily. <laughs> well, that saved me some time, but yeah, usually you would take this cover off and pull it down. A little concerning, but we're ripping this stuff out anyways. Now we go into the trunk, which is going to be a little bit different for me than you guys. Okay, if you look, almost all my trunk interior is gone anyways. I do eventually have to find all this stuff. But I did remove my whole hinge, which I really wish I recorded it, but I didn't. So this whole hinge set up, which basically is your, like, uh, don't put stuff that high or the roof will crush it kind of thing. I don't even know what it's actually called. It's just some bolts from right here. So if you can see right there. And right there it unbolts and then sits on that hinge. And once you do that, now this is something I did because I'm going to be adjusting on the fly if I ever need to my uh, shock stuff. Right there is your shock. So I just cut a teeny little hole. You will never really notice it. And then I could get right into here. Now what's in here is 13's sockets. Ah, my stupid light. <laughs> there we go. There you go. See one nut there and one nut there and then the plug pulls right out and then you're good. So we're gonna knock that out really quick and then the whole shock will drop down. I'm not reusing these, I don't really care. So if it gets a little banged up, not a big problem to me. All right, now you got everything disconnected. Now you just gotta wiggle it all out. And that's not really that hard to do. Sometimes since this is just a poopy setup, just bam, bam, bam. Definitely have the two hands because you can pull down and then lift this out and it'll come right out. All right, now that we got this rear one out, I kind of want to weigh it. Don't mind my glove. Or my zip tie. Get out of there, zip tie. All right, let's see how much this one weighs. This is factory. 23.7. All right, let's grab one of the new ones. So we went 23.7 to 10. So that is like a 13 pound loyos on each corner so that'd be like what 13 is like 26 pounds in the rear we just drop that's really not bad at all not bad not bad at all all right so now to start throwing this one in so a couple notes on this kind of leave this stuff loose because i'm gonna have to adjust it i did measure and try to get them each like the same um oh also over here is like not a zip tie but it's a little uh tie strap because these pieces pop out so just make sure you don't lose them or put them in wrong. And that's really it. We're going to use all the new hardware and start throwing this one in. It's basically going to be the same way, just reverse. Uh, if you have two people, 50 times easier because then you can have someone to hand it to you. If not, you just got to deal with it. All right, a little trick if you do it by yourself. So you got your hole where your shot goes. What I'm doing is I took off those little bushings. I have it like rigged up in the cradle, and then I have my teeny little perch. You can do this with a bottle jack or something, and then I'm just gonna lower my lift, and in theory, that's gonna bring the control arm up high enough, where then I could stick my hand in this hole, grab it, and align it up to the, the bolts. Should be pretty straightforward and simple. All right, now as you see, we got them up. I was able to literally pull from right here all the way up, and then you just thread one nut at a time, and then you're good. Now we're gonna go down below, and get that control arm all set up. It's not that bad. All right, now we're gonna start getting the strut and everything mounted. So this is where the two little pieces, remember I said that those are like kind of strapped on there? These two, so make sure you put the small side in here. Go in there. And then the one on the other side, and all you're gonna do is lift this up, see how easy that's gonna be, and then put the bolts through. Pretty straightforward. All right, so now that we got front and rear all installed, I'm gonna lower it again. And now I'm going to kind of see how low the rear really kind of is. And then at the end, and after I pull the lines off, pull the pumps off, 
Make sure I got all the weight out of it. Then we're going to start adjusting. I left all the adjuster rings loose. But let's just see how low it is like this. All right, so now we're going to start working on getting this pump out of here. So it looks like you got these two lines. But first, what I'm going to do is just taking off the belt. So I'm going to remove the supercharger belt just to get out of the way. It's pretty easy. It's a 17. And then me remove the main belt, which is also 17 down there, and just get them out of the way. All right, so we got these two lines out, and I basically spilled fluid everywhere. That was stupid of me. Put a bucket under there, or just empty out the reservoir. So now I'm going to start removing these reservoirs. So it should be like a 10. We're going to be moving both of these and getting them out of the way because I should not need them anymore for this system. So also just, you know, follow your lines. Pull them off. So we're going to do one at a time because that's also going to give me so much more access to start working on this pump. And they got to come out anyways. So to remove the reservoir, you can pull up over here. Here's actually your filter. So if you ever do need to change your filter for this old ABC system, it's right there. And also... I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be green and not red, but that's neither here nor there. You have one bolt for this bracket right here, which is there, and then one tucked right over there, and then this whole unit should just pop right out. I might need a little bit of a two-hander to kind of wiggle it, but that will come right out. Oh, and heads up, there's one more 10 mil right there, and then this whole unit comes right out, and now you got all this extra room to help hit up all the bolts and all that stuff. Like, literally right over here, you can see everything. So then we're going to start getting more of the lines off. So it should be one right there, if you can see down there by my hand. And then there's going to be one snuck over somewhere else, but we're going to start just pulling stuff off and go from there, then start demounting this. All right, so for this one right over here, you're going to need a 19 wrench. And then for this one, you're going to need a 17, so you just break them loose. They're banjos, you're going to leak oil. But as I already made a mess, hopefully you're smart enough to put a bucket under there or something. I was not. If you want to know how to get that back one, so you go get yourself a ratcheting wrench like this, and you can fit it right in there. Hopefully you guys can see it's going to be right down there, and then you just go click, click, click. All right, I'm going to have to use two hands, but knock all that out. Okay, now that you got those out, if you can see right here, see where my blue finger is? You got to start taking these bolts out. So these are going to be um, inverted torques, and it's going to be a, let me come over to here. Mine is an E12. And you're going to need this one. There's supposed to be one right over here. If you could see right down there on that angle. But mine's not there. My whole pump moves now. Which I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Uh, also, I literally just pulled this out of my uh, pump. Hey, there's my dipstick. <laughs> and then there's another bolt. Let's see if I could show you from here. Uh, literally, so here's this one. See right there where that one is? There's one right behind it, just down here more. So pull those two out, and that pump should start swinging out very shortly. Okay, word of advice. Let's see if we get a light down there. You see how now I got no pulley on there? Remove your pulley. <laughs> the pulley comes off really easily. It's just three E12s, and then it'll slide right off. That'll give you a lot more space. Also, fun fact, so for that back bolt I was talking about, it's in the your tensioner is a little bit in the way so I just literally just depressed my tensioner and I was able to get it right out now this pump should be literally free it feels free actually it feels like I got something back there so let me just get the light down there uh, let me see let me do a little investigating because it feels like I got something like right yep I feel a nut right back there so I'm trying to show you if I can see it. But there's something right back there, and I can see the nut from here. It looks like maybe it's a ground strap or something, but it should be the lower bracket, so we'll pull that one out now. All right, so we got it out. So the bolts we were looking for is this one, this one that are on the front, and then this little bugger on the back is like a stud. That's how they had it mounted up, and it really is unfortunate to get to. To make it easier, I removed this sensor, so I had a little bit more room to come out. It's just... Uh, some Torx 15s to pull that out and it pops right out. Now this pump is still good. It still all works. So if anyone wants to buy it, I'll sell it cheap. Put the pulley back on, clean it up for you. Hit me up. I'll punt it all cheap. But we got that out of the way. Now I'm going to sit there and clean all this off because I dropped so much effing fluid down there. And then we'll start looking at the new pump. All right. Before I put a new pump in, what we're going to do is start ripping apart these lines and holy crap, they go everywhere. And that one I don't think is factory. 
So I'm gonna try to film some of this, but there's just a real lot of them. They shoot like literally, like look it. They're going all in get in the car. So I don't know. I'm gonna start pulling as many as I can out. I'm probably gonna start cutting some. But for like a normal person, I wouldn't even bother. I don't think I'm gonna get that much weight. But I'm gonna see how far I get and then I'll show you. All right, so looking at some of these lines, there's a lot of like little 10 mils you'd take off. But even like, I don't know if you can even see with this light. Look at this line right here. So this line just literally loops around and then you get this big distribution box. There's a lot of clutter over here. So I'm just gonna start ripping it all apart. All right, one thing that's easy to remove is right here. And this is your cooler for all your ABC stuff. So it looks like a pretty good cooler. It looks like there's a 10 mil there and then that will pop out. And then you can remove that to get rid of these two lines and it drops some LBs. All right, fun facts of the removing the lines from hell. <sighs> Driver side fender. This is all the um, accumulator distribution box that goes to the rear. So as you see, it sucks. There's a few tens that comes out, start cracking your lines and pull them out. And then those are the only ones that run all the way back. So just follow your lines. Don't cut power steering lines. Try not to cut anything unless you have to. I already had to. All right, so now we're following all these lines back into the driver's side fender while. So you take off the fender liner and look at it. A smorgasbord of more FM lines and accumulators. So just literally keep tracing them. So this looks like seven or eight lines. It looks like a lot back here. So I'm going to start unbolting and start ripping them off. I might start saws on because this is a cluster. And then also if you're looking at, just keep following the line. So here's the bleeder. And this one is for the driver's side so i'm just going to keep following it but it looks like some of this goes like under and over the subframe so i'm going to try to snake it through if i can't my good old friend the sawzall down there in my trash pile will start hacking away but i'm going to try to save a lot of lines and what it looks like don't cut this one that looks like a drain but and also don't cut your brake lines so just watch what you're doing go slow and these should be all 17s and 10s again okay so now that we got majority of the lines, I probably got like maybe a foot left of lines, but that was just like going over the rear subframe, which sucks. I did not need bolt them. I cut as much as I could, or I'd have to drop the subframe for basically a foot of line, which wasn't going to matter that much to me, and I made sure I zip tied everything up. Next, we're going to be doing with the power steering pump. So this is a mediumly important part. Make sure you buy the right one. So this is the power steering pump from a CLS 55. This will not work, but it looks like it would work. So the one you need is what I got right over here. A pump from an ML55 W163 chassis, okay? So I'm going to show you the difference right here. They look the same, but do you see this bracket? Look right there. You see this bracket? This one does not have it. So this bracket is what's going to allow you to bolt it in an easy and proper location for this car. Can you bolt this one up? Maybe. But I just test fitted this one and it works perfectly fine. Now, you'll have the bolt holes going here. Going here, this one should be where you have to like pull back the tensioner. And then you got your bolt hole in the back over here. Use all the same hardware you pulled out to do the ABC pump. It should all just go right in. Now there is a bracket. You could keep the bracket in the back as a supporting agency or take it off for a little bit of weight. Now, also what you have to remember. Okay, so you wanna get your fluid in the reservoir. How are you effing gonna do that? You have two options of how to do this. You could go buy a ML55 reservoir, which will go right on. You need to buy the gasket, you need to buy the clip for here. It is gonna make it a lot more cleaner in your engine bay, a lot more room on places, but you do have to do a little bit work for the return line. So for the return line that would go right here, it's different on the SL, so you basically just have to modify it a little bit. Now, if you want to just plug, play, go, don't want to spend the extra money, I think these might be like 20 bucks. If you don't want to spend them, oh, and those pumps, get them on eBay for like 35 bucks, or spend a little bit more money at FCP Euro. That's 100% your choice. They're easy to replace. They're easy to get to. It's not a big deal. So the other idea is you're going to take your factory reservoir, and you're going to kind of chop it all down and use that as a remote one. Now, this one won't hold as much fluid as the factory one, so that makes it a little bit better. This one just cleans up the engine bay a little bit and makes it a little bit nicer looking. So I'm going to see which one I really want to do because if not, I just had these in my parts and this is a brand new part. I had it upstairs in my uh, storage room, so I could just put it right back in there. I don't need to do it because I don't really need this yet. Because if you guys know a lot of like um, M113 and M112Ks, this gasket right here fails. And then it starts leaking all of the pumps. 
if you use the SL style, it's very unlikely to leak because it's a complete difference. It's literally a hose with a clamp, not a little O-ring on there. So take it how you want, use it how you want. Also, these are a little bit tricky for some people to get in because you need to pop it in. And with the SL style, it's literally just a hose and a clamp. Very effing simple. So we're going to start mocking up the pump, verify it fits, and go from there. Oh, another thing. You're probably going to have to get a new, uh, super, or a new serpentine belt because here is the ABC pulley, and here's the pulley you're going to. Can you see the difference? If you put them together, you can see how much bigger this one is. So we're most likely going to measure it all up. We'll probably go with like a CLS belt, or we'll just look around. I'll try to throw the part number down there, but right now I'm just planning to use the same belt I got my CLS. And hopefully this works. I might try the SL belt and see how loose it is because the tension might pick it up. But that still is like a little bit of a, a difference right there. Also, I, think, I don't think I forgot to say this. I'm going to weigh everything at the end. But this pump is 500 times lighter. Maybe not that exact measurement. But just this pulley weighs almost as much as this pump. So I'll weigh this before I put it on the car. And then I'll weigh everything at the end and show you how much weight loss we did. But yeah, like I was saying, let's get back to actually throwing this pump in and hopefully it works. All right, so we got the pump in and yes, it does fit. It's really effing easy. So you got your E12 right there from your factory bolt. You have a, I put a 13 over here from a an extra bolt we had right there just because you got this AC line and it did suck to get um, inverted in there, but now I guess it's got like a ratcheting wrench. And then the last bolt is the one that really effing sucks. So I'm gonna try to show you where it goes. It's the same place you took the other one out, but just in case you couldn't figure that one out or you don't remember. So, you're gonna move. Let's see if I can even see it from here. I don't think I can. So where it is, is literally right there. Right here is where the bolt is. So an easy way to get it is you just get your tensioner. You either have a friend, mine's out doing some rainbow festival stuff, and then it'll go right in. And now the other thing, you do gotta modify this like a uh, slightly. So here's the power steering line. So if you see right now I got the pump loose, that's how you want it to be. So first make sure you get the AC connector out of your way, but you see how the line like kind of fits. You need to pull it up. So make sure everything's loose and then thread it in and you might need to bend this a little bit just to get the proper angle. And then that's it. And then I'm gonna clean this whole area up and then I'll debate which one I do because so here is the return for the power steering. See how it faces this way towards the factory ABC part. If you wanted to use the other one that I bought, you need to cut right here and then make the bend go like this way. Okay, or you just reuse this. You don't gotta cut anything, but you just add a little bit more clutter to this. But if you don't really mind, this is the easiest and cheapest way. Just literally modify that and I'll show you how to do it. But I'm gonna go tighten this all up, bolt it all in, get that line all up, and then I'm gonna clean this whole area, then decide which one I want to do. All right, so it's all bolted in and it's effing sturdy with those three bolts. The line is in there. Ah, focus, baby. Line's in there. I still need to reach attach it on the bottom down there. Also, this bracket right here, do you see this? It went all the way up here, so I was concerned it might hit the belt a little bit, so I just like trimmed it down. It is a little bit of a sharp edge, so I might smooth that out later on. But now I'm going to scrub this, and I think I decided I'm going to use that tank. Just I'll save that one for my other cars. Okay, reservoir is in, so this is the only part of the bracket you really need. It's pretty effing sturdy. It's got a little bit of like a grommet there, so it could kind of flex when the engine throws, like when it moves and stuff. Um, it bolts right into there. I just push the clamp all the way up, so hopefully that holds. If not, then I will be switching to the other tank. And this line literally just slides all right in, and it's not that cluttered over here. It cleaned up all that, so you got all this little area still free. I just like having less clutter, less items. That's why it's easier to work on stuff. So... This looks pretty good. So we'll add some fluid, we'll get a belt, we'll test it out, make sure the system doesn't really like start pissing out fluid, but we should be good. Bam, here's everything removed from my SL. Now, I weighed it all out. It's roughly 184 pounds of weight I lost. That means lost. I weighed everything, compared it. Right in just lines, and I didn't. Even, I got probably 90% of the lines out, there was 15 pounds in just lines. And then all these blocks, they're not really light. So, now what is still good at the system? 
my rear shocks are still good. My front ones, I bang the, the crap out of those nuts. The lines, nine, I, I cut a lot of them, so that's all going to be trashed. If someone needs an ABC pump, it still works. If someone needs distribution blocks, they still all work. I kind of cut the line so I didn't damage those at all. And then I got my teeny little cooler. So if someone wants them, hit me up. Offer me something that's willing for me to ship. Or if you're local, just come by and do them really cheap. If not, then they're just going to go in the ML and off the scrap. But not bad. All right, now that you got everything all set, you tested, everything all looks good, you're all cleaned off, everything you like, and it's cool. Now you wanna get rid of that pesky red ABC fault. So you go to this fuse right here, which is a 15. You pull it out. Mine was already pulled. Well, I pulled it already. And then it is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the last one in orange block, sevens. So it should be the seventh one in orange block. It is a 15 amp. And then I'll put that on after. You could come to your car. I saw my other rigmarole on the ground. And that's just one way of doing it. And then come to your dash. Uh, I don't mind all my other stuff. I'm doing like multiple videos. Might have a battery issue. And now you guys can see we'll shut the windows. So it's a little darker in here. No more red. Now you just have the white one, which you could click away and then program the other one out with star. But I know most people don't have a star computer, so this is the quick and easiest way to do it. Bam. There it is on the new spring suspension. It's not too low, but it's not too high. I got about like two fingers in there. And then for the rear, roughly, okay, the rear is definitely a little bit higher. But I want to drive the car around a little bit. I want to let it get settled. And then I'll definitely lower it because it's super easy to actually adjust. But I'm so happy with it. Look at all the rigmarole I got away. Big shout out to rah, Silver. Uh, silver suspension setup. They're here in Fort Myers. I'll put all the links below. This is for the SLK or the SL. R, and then if you want to know if my spring stuff that I got is six kilograms and then I think it says 50 kilograms for the rear. I'll have to double check that. But it's looking so good. So the SL is looking so good now. I don't have to worry about that stupid ABC dropping when I come out in the morning or just like I'm going around town if it collapsed or have any issues like that. Plus I dropped, I think, like I said, a total of 184 pounds. That's what I lost in all this. So this kit is pretty affordable. It's roughly, I think, $1,200, I think it's $1,300, plus whatever you might have to pay for shipping and stuff like that. And then they got a series of add-ons, like I said. And to go over everything you still need once you buy this kit, you get an ML55 pump. And then if you want, go get the corresponding reservoir, or just do what I did. Use the factory one, you'll save yourself some money, and it's not that bad, it looks pretty good. The fluid you need is gonna be always green. If you notice, mine was red. For whatever reason, it just is what it is. They might have put the wrong fluid in, but I'm pretty sure all the fluid you get. Penzo makes them, I think CHF. I'll put a link below. SCP Euro stocks it. And even AutoZone and all those places stock it, so you don't have to do the Mercedes stuff. Now, for the dash light, like I saw, I pulled that fuse to make it go from red to white, and then I just click my button. You could code it out in the dash. I just need to basically hook up my star system and go through it and actually read all the code. I kind of was running out a little bit of time with this because I want to drive the car around. I want to drive it. I want to get it all suited up. But if you guys really want me to code it out, I'll make another short, like maybe two, three, four minute video soon. Just throw some comments down, say, show us how to code it out. That way you get no message in the dash. I kind of wanted to, I want to do it all in one shot because I have like an SOS one on there and I'm getting rid of that one too because I don't really have the phone and all that. But hope you guys liked the video. Throw a comment down below. If you do like this kit and you want your SL to look just like this, hit up Silver. Tell them that you saw my video. That could help me out. Maybe they'll throw me some cool parts or let me test some cool strings. But catch you guys later. Hopefully you guys like the channel. You like it. And see you next time.